Hey guys, it's me again. Just have another brief message today. God did not call us to collect other believers' monies so that we can spend it better than they can. I don't see it anywhere in the Bible where we are instructed to, hey, get incorporated and then you can go ask other believers for their money because you're smarter than they are and you can spend their money better and wiser than they, than they ever can. I don't see that anywhere in the Bible. So why do ministries ask for our money? It's not biblical. I don't care if it's a YouTube ministry. I don't care if it's a 501c3 local church, especially if it's a 501c3 local church. But um, yeah, God did not call us to ask for money, to be beggars, to be asking for donations. We're, we're um, instructed to give, yes, but not to ask. We will give as the Lord leads us to give, but nowhere in the Bible does the Lord ever instruct any believer to just ask for people's money and collect it and spend it wiser than they can. So any ministry, quote unquote, um, that asks you for money, they're, I wouldn't really say they're um, from Satan necessarily, but a lot of them are deceived. They think that's just the way it's done, especially all these, I don't know, a bunch of these people that I sort of respect who are asking for your donations so they can buy Bibles to give to people. I mean, how much money are they making off of it? Do you really think they're not making money off of that? Um, that's a very, very intricate operation, you know, to um, be able to um, buy these Bibles, you know, wholesale, I guess, and then be able to distribute them to people in other countries. Yeah, I mean, it's a real service. I'm not saying that it's not, but it's still a money-making scheme. I'm not saying that nobody's getting free Bibles somewhere, but the way they make it out to be when they present it as something you have to do if you want to get brownie points from God. You know, you have to spend your money through their organization, through their ministry. That you can't just spend it, you know, the way you want to spend it. You know, if they really want to help those people, why don't they just start giving out addresses of people who need Bibles? And then make you allow you to figure out how to get the Bible to that person. Do they have special powers that only they have the capability to send free Bibles to people? I guess I have one specific guy in mind when I'm thinking of the free Bible ministry thing, but it, it's not it, its not just him. There's a bunch of other stuff. As I've mentioned before, um, YouTube channels, you know, Christian ones or Watchmen channels that ask for money. It's just horrible, horrible witness because it's you're sort of showing the backstage part of your show and the backstage part is kind of implying that you don't really think that the Lord is coming back anytime soon. That's why you need to keep asking people for money you know to support your channel again i know my channel sucks when I, i'm not saying it's better than any of them i mean it really it really does suck that's why I have people what 20 people watch my videos and if you're one of those 20 yeah maybe the lord's speaking to you maybe you can share this video to someone but um yeah i mean maybe that's why i don't have any viewers maybe i should um make it you know make you know maybe, maybe i should invest more and make it look cooler but that's not our ministry we're not supposed to have this high production value channel and so we can preach the gospel and then you know so we can ask people for money oh please support my channel you know if you're really enjoying the entertainment i'm providing you so i can keep providing you that entertainment that's really what it boils down to they're providing entertainment so yeah i'm just ranting um oh the other thing i want to rant about um okay i'm doing this because i think the time is short and we don't have time to be playing games. And those of us who may be just a little more gullible than others, we don't need to fall for the, you know, the, the sob stories of these Watchmen guys or who have ministries like giving Bibles away and stuff like that. We, we don't need to be suckers for that, okay? Just preach the gospel. And um, there's a lot of deception going on right now. There's always been, but now it's like the enemy is ramping it up. And they're very deceptive. I mean, deception is deceptive. It wouldn't be deception if it wasn't capable of deceiving people. You know, the salvation by works is going around 
YouTube, I'm not YouTube, but Twitter, probably YouTube as well. There's this one lady who's just been going around and, you know, tweeting all of these flowery words uh, of holiness, righteousness, all of that. It's self-righteousness and it's salvation by works. And it's directly from Satan. So don't listen to that woman. I'm not even going to mention her by name. But um, she's been making the rounds over the last couple of days. And, you know, she looks like a Christian, you know. I mean, or not looks like a Christian, but she acts like a Christian. Uses Christianese terms. So stay away from that. And the other thing I want to rant about, and, and it's not really that new, but it's Satan's number one tactic. You know, did God really say that? What am I talking about? I'm talking about, you know, some books, some guys tweeting that, you know, oh yeah, what the Bibles we have today is not really, you know, the real translation, you know, whatever it is. It doesn't mean what you think it means because of quote-unquote Hellenistic translations. Um, some guy actually tweeted it. I'm thinking of one specific guy. I forgot his name, but even if I do remember his name, I'm not going to mention it. Yeah, so... Basically, what Satan's strategy is always confusion, and and um, his kids are trying to tell you that the Bible you have, you can't trust it. So everything you thought you knew, you might actually not really know. So, so what does that create? It's it's supposed to make you question your salvation, make you question if the gospel you've been preached to is the right gospel, the gospel you're preaching to is the, uh, you know it could be the wrong gospel. It's supposed to um, create confusion. So don't fall for those tricks. Um, absolutely, there are some lousy translations out there. But as always, the devil wants you to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Okay, there are some very decent translations out there. M most of them are. There's some horrible ones, especially the new newer ones. But the Lord knew ahead of time that, you know, Satan was going to attack the word in clever ways. So there's going to be bad translations out there. It doesn't mean every translation is bad. And whenever you have some loon who is um, telling you that there's only one translation or there's this new translation that actually gets it right, finally, then you got to keep away from all those, you know, those psychos. Um, they're, they're just Satan's kids. The, the thing is, God knows how to get his word and his message to us in spite of man's attempts to try to pervert it. So just trust the Lord. You have the Holy Spirit. The gospel is simple. You don't need to be a scholar to understand the gospel. Believe in Jesus. Believe in the work he did on the cross, that he paid for the penalty of all your sins, all our sins, past, present, and future. And that he paid for it when he died on the cross and he rose on the third day, physically and literally. And if we um, just accept that truth, that we can, if we just accept his free gift of eternal life through faith, you know, we can be sure that we are going to heaven when we die, like right away. And we are sealed by the Holy Spirit till the day of redemption. And if the rapture happens before we die, then yeah, awesome. And, you know, if things are happening. It's, it, it just feels weird to me right now. Um, it's like we're waiting. We're just waiting for something. Um, like I said in one of my videos, it's like everything else is happening except that one thing that we're, we're all waiting for, which is the rapture. Um, you know, like I said, the Lord knows how to make an entrance, and it's going to be grand. He's He's going to make sure that, you know, we're at the very dead end. We're desperate, nowhere else to go. We're, we're basically there already. We're just waiting, like what's happening. Things are just getting weird. And we hear of all these rumors, wars, rumors of wars, and then the whole digital currency thing, and that's terrifying, you know. And we all know it's everything's a theater, like what's happening in politics. I'm not into politics at all. I, I sort of got into it like a couple of years ago, three years ago maybe, just for a brief, brief, brief period. And the Lord quickly shifted my focus away from politics and towards His soon glorious appearing. And hopefully that's what happens to all of us. Stop putting your faith in this world. Stop putting your faith in politicians. Stop praying for a revival in this country. And I'm not talking about people getting saved because when people talk about revival, what they have in mind is, oh yeah, everybody's going to be a Christian in America and churches are going to be full. Yeah, that's what the pastors want. They want your money. And they think that if there's a, a revival, quote unquote, in the United States, that the Lord is just going to bless our country 
you know, with prosperity financially and every, everybody's going to be rich and happy. And that's the kind of revival they're talking about. They think that if we somehow get our act together and have a revival, that the Lord's going to say, oh, look, look, America's revived. I'm going to bless America with a lot of prosperity. You know, that's the wrong hope. Your hope is in this world. Our blessed hope is Jesus appearing specifically for us, the church, the bride of Christ, the saints, whatever you want to call us. That's our blessed hope. He will get us out of this wicked, disgusting, evil world that's being operated by the most wicked men I have ever seen in history. And, and you know who I'm talking about. There's only a handful of them. And um, yeah, they're running the show. I mean, ultimately, God's in control. But, you know, the next move is for us to be taken out of here. And that's what we should all be um, looking forward to not, and get our hope out of this world. And it's just stupid. And if you claim to be a Christian and you're um, into politics and, you know, you're, you want Trump or whoever to uh, come back, examine your heart. Make sure that you're um, really saved. Because the Holy Spirit, He speaks to God's children. And, uh, and if you're not hearing anything from the Holy Spirit and you're thinking Trump, Trump, Trump or whoever, get born again. Okay? Just don't be a cultural Christian because, oh yeah, our forefathers are all Christian, so you're Christian too. No, that's not how it is. You need to have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. So I'm just actually ranting a bunch. So, yeah, I hope Jesus comes soon. I mean, it's it's getting really, really desperate here. Um, I hope he comes and gets us. But keep looking up, guys. Our redemption draws near. And it sounds really desperate because I am getting desperate. You know, I've been waiting for two years for the rapture. I mean, actually actively watching for it. Some people have been for like decades. So I, um, and some of them are dead. So, um, hopefully Jesus comes before I'm dead and hopefully, um, it'll be within the next few weeks. That'd be really awesome. So, um, all right until next time, hopefully there won't be a next time.